Hello everybody, in this video I want to talk about Cine AI because that's one of the new features that's been made available to us in the latest firmware version 2 for the FX3. Now we do get a lot of other cool new features as well. We've got a new layout for the screen which is great. We can, we can use timecode with a suitable cable. We've got the ability to use uh, monitor LUTs which is great and that kind of combines as well with Cine AI and we'll go into that as part of this video. And we've also got things like a new main menu interface. But what we're mainly going to be looking at is Cine EI and how you can really use it to your advantage. And I really think it's a fabulous addition to the FX3. OK, so to begin with, I guess the first thing to understand really is that with this new firmware, shooting in log has now been moved into an entirely different menu item. So whereas before we would have had our picture profiles and as we scroll through these, you know, we can go all through the usual ones like Cine and till we get to six. And then you'll notice that picture profiles seven through nine are now no longer available. And that's because they were the S-Log profiles, which have now been moved into the new log option. Now you can still use S-Log using picture profiles, but just to show you, I've now set my picture profile one to use S-Log. And uh, if I want to be able to shoot using S-Log without using Cine EI, I can do that. Okay, so let's go into the main menu. And to begin with, we'll have a quick look at these new main menus one and two. So you can see these are really useful actually. They're kind of, a, they've got all the main features in that you're likely to use. Now the ones we're really gonna be looking at today are Cine EI and LUTs. And in order to use these, we need to go across to main two and then go to where it says log off. And we're gonna change our log shooting to one of these options. So for now, I'm just gonna go straight down to Cine EI, which I feel is the best one to use. And so we're just gonna dive straight into that and then I'll show you how to use Cine EI log shooting. You'll notice for now, color gamut is set to S gamut 3.cine and S log 3. Uh, you can choose the option without S gamut 3.cine, but I think that's the best one to use. So we'll just leave it on that for now. Uh, embed LUT file is currently turned off and contrary to what a lot of people are saying this does not apply the LUT file to the recorded image. What this does is embeds the LUT file via metadata and in some applications such as Sony software you will be able to reapply the LUT using the software and the recorded file will know at what Cine EI setting uh, the file was recorded at. So basically when you load up the image into this application, it will look exactly as it did when you recorded it. For now, we're not going to worry about that. I'll leave that set to off. So Cine EI is really designed to allow you to monitor your image by maintaining a visually good exposure. Now it does this by using monitor LUTs. And at the moment, the monitor LUT is turned on and you'll see that not only do I have the monitor LUT showing on the screen for the camera, but it's also being sent out via HDMI to my port keys monitor. And both screens look very similar. Now I don't have a LUT applied on my external monitor and it's very important to understand that because if you were to have a viewing LUT on your external monitor, it would mess up this system. A viewing LUT on the external monitor is designed to work with a signal which is just S-Log3, which is coming from the camera. Now you can turn the LUT off and you can do that by going into the menus and you can see here we've got a LUT on. If I change that to off, then the LUT will be turned off both on the camera and on the external monitor. Now one, one limitation of doing this is that because Cine EI is really set up to help you to monitor your exposure, it kind of takes over the whole HDMI system and doesn't allow you to send 4K out to HDMI. And you can see that if you go into the output options for HDMI, and I've got mine set up here, so my HDMI output settings, and if I go down to output resolution, you'll see that's currently on 1080. Now I can't change to 4K, and the reason I can't change to 4K is because I'm using log shooting and Cine EI. Hey everybody, I'm gonna jump in here during the editing because there's one little thing I've found out since uh, recording this video, and that is there is one uh, workaround to the 1080p output limitation. 
although it's fairly limited, but I felt I should probably tell you about it anyway. And that's if you go into the uh, record media during HDMI output option and turn that off so that uh, you're not recording to the internal cards in the camera and you're only recording via HDMI using something like a Ninja, then you are able to uh, send that out using 4K. And you can see here that uh, we have options to choose either 25p 10-bit or 50p 10-bit. Now it's worth remembering that this is going to be fairly limited because in order for Cine EI to be useful, you need to be using a LUT. And if you turn on a LUT, that's still going to be sent out via HDMI. But it may be useful if you want to record with the LUT turned off for some reason uh, to the Ninja, then you can do that. And if you also want to record with the LUT embedded at 4K, then you can do that as well. As I say, it's fairly limited, but I thought it'd be worth jumping in just to tell you about this in case it might be useful. Now, one of the nice features about using this new firmware on the FX3 is you do have the ability to install user LUTs. Now, for this video, I'm not going to go into detail in that because I think it's important that everyone would be able to follow along with this. And so in order to do that, I'm going to use the inbuilt Sony S709 LUT which actually works really well. And I think I'm just going to be using this one for now, even though I may be applying other LUTs uh, in post, this works really well as an on-camera LUT solution. So for now, we're going to leave our LUT at S709 and uh, we will just proceed with that. So obviously turning the LUT on and off, you can go into the menu to do that. And that can be done within the um, new main interface or the new main menu number one. And you can see here main one and we've got the option to turn the LUT on or we can turn the LUT off. Now, a better way to do this is to assign it to a key. And what I've done is I've assigned the LUT on and off option to my custom key number four. If you want to do that, you go into setup at the bottom here and then go into operation customize, go to movie custom key dial set. And you can see here that I've got uh, the button, the second option here, set to display LUT switch. So just do that and then you'll be able to do the same thing. Okay, so let's come out of the menu again. And you'll see now that when I press button four, the camera switches the LUT on. Now notice, not only does it switch it on on the camera, but you're also seeing it via HDMI on the external monitor. And it's really useful being able to switch the LUT off because as you'll see later on when we go into a bit more detail, this does allow you to see the image which has the exposure index applied to it with the LUT on. And then if you ever want to see the image without any exposure index applied, you can turn the LUT off and you'll get a good visualization of how your exposure is looking. For now, we'll just leave it turned on. I'm going to jump in here because I feel it's important to understand what the Cine EI values shown at the bottom of the screen refer to. The first number is the current exposure index. Now I like to think of this as being an ISO preview. It's showing you what your image would look like at that specific ISO, but it's not actually adjusting the ISO or affecting your exposure at all. It's important to remember that the actual ISO is always going to be either 800 or 12,800, depending on your selected base. The next number is showing the available stops of dynamic range above middle gray. As you can see in this chart from Sony, the dynamic range above and below middle gray changes depending on your exposure level. The highlighted section in the middle of the chart shows that the 800 EI base offers six stops of dynamic range above a correctly exposed middle gray with nine stops below it. As you can see, the higher you push middle gray in the dynamic range, the less stops of light are available for highlights. So that is what this middle number is telling you. And then finally, it shows whether the low or high base ISO is active by displaying either L or H. Okay, so moving on, anyone who's used the FX3 for a while will know that it's advisable to stick to the main base ISOs. And up until now, the base ISOs have been reported to be 640 and 12,800. Now, for some reason, with this new update, uh, we're told that that's now changed to 800 and 12,800. I'm not entirely sure why. I can only assume it's so that the FX3 now lines up with these bigger brothers, so the FX6 and FX9. So moving forward, we're going to use base exposure indexes 
of 812,800. And you can see that here at the bottom of the screen. It's currently showing that I'm using a bait, an exposure index of 800 with on the low base. Now, if you want to change to the high base using Cine EI, there's a few ways to do that. So you can go into the menu and we'll go again to the new main menus. And you'll see here that we've got our base set at 800. Now we can go in and we can change that accordingly to 12,800. And then we could obviously adjust our exposure to using that base. Something like that. So this is going to bring me on to the next custom key setting that I've actually changed because when using Cine EI, you can no longer use the ISO button on the top of the camera to control flexible exposure mode ISO settings. So again, I've gone in and remapped my ISO button and I'll show you that. And you'll see that on top of the camera, that's this one. I've now got that set to base ISO switch. And you'll be able to find that in the menus. I'll show you where that is. So it's here in the exposure values menu. So with that done, I can now quickly switch between base ISOs. So you can see we're currently on 12,800 on the high base. And just by pressing the ISO button, I can switch back to the low base. This makes setting the camera um, depending on your scene extremely quick. And this is one of the best features of using Cine EI for me, rather than fiddling around trying to dial in ISOs and running the risk of choosing you know, ISOs in between our base values, it's now really simple. One press of the button and you jump to your high base, press it again and you jump to your low base. So let's, for instance, say, let's turn the LUT off. Now, this is gonna give us the kind of result we're used to working with, the kind of feedback we're used to working with. So this image is correctly exposed and you can tell that this is just S-Log3, we're at Iris 2.8 and our exposure is showing that this white block here, this 90% uh, white card, is coming in at around 62%, which is where it should be for S-Log3. So this is a correctly exposed image. And because this is a controlled scene, you can see that even the multimeter is showing that we're spot on. Uh, you can't always trust the multimeter on this camera because it does use the whole screen. But in this instance, we can rely on it because this is a scene that's been set up just to show you this. So how would we normally deal with this? Well, when we're shooting S-Log3, we would probably want to bring up our exposure so that we're retaining more of the information in the shadows. And we'd normally do that by coming up around maybe 1.7 stops. And you can see that here, the multimeter is showing 1.7 stops. We've gone down to F1.6 and uh, we're still at our base 800 EI. So we're still at ISO 800 effectively. And this is normally how it'd work. And I've got used to looking at you know, my screens like this and I quite often will just shoot in S-Log without using a LUT and it all works great. And that's what we've become used to. So let me show you how Cine EI makes this whole process so much better. So to begin with, I'm gonna bring the exposure back down. I'm gonna bring this back down to zero. So we've got a correctly exposed S-Log image. I'm gonna turn the LUT back on. And as you can see, with the LUT turned on, so I'm now getting zebras on my uh, white here, and that's because my zebras on the camera are still set to 77%, which is where white should be when using this S709 LUT. And you can see likewise on the waveform that my whites are coming in around that value, around 75. So in order to achieve the same 1.7 stop overexposure, we would need to reduce our exposure index by 1.7. So we do that by going three clicks per stop. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, and then one, two. So that brings our exposure index down to 250 on our low base. And you can see as a result that the image looks underexposed. Our meters are showing it's underexposed and we need to adjust that. So in order to get our exposure correct, I'm just gonna use the waveform here. I'm gonna bring this up until that's back up around just over 75%. And there we go. So with my iris back at F1.6, even the multimeter is showing a correct exposure. My whites are dropping where they should be on the waveform and the screen now looks correct. But in the background, the S-Log image 
has a 1.7 stop increase on exposure. And we can see that by turning the LUT off. And this is our S log image. And as you can see, you know, we've got that exposure increase that we want. I just want to add a little segment here as I feel what's happening needs a little more explanation. I've put two shots side by side here. The one on the left is showing the camera set to 800 EI with the correct exposure at f2.5. And the shot on the right is set to 250 EI with the correct exposure at f1.6. When using Cine EI, both of these examples look the same, both on the image shown on the screen as well as on the monitoring tools. Notice how the histogram and waveform looks identical in both examples. Now, if I reveal the S-Log image on the monitors, you'll see what's actually being recorded by the camera in both instances. You can clearly see that the setup on the right using 250 EI is recording at a higher exposure level than the camera set at 800 EI on the left. It's worth remembering that throughout this video, the ISO is always at either 800 or 12,800, regardless of the Cine EI setting used. All Cine EI is doing is changing the way the image looks on the monitor, as well as on the monitoring tools, forcing an exposure change to make the image look correctly exposed. Okay, and likewise, we can go into our high base. If we want to do the same thing, if we want to set a 1.7 stop increase in exposure, and we come down one, two, three, and then one, two, and that gives us our 1.7 stop reduction in exposure index, which will give us a 1.7 stop increase in exposure. And then likewise, we would just adjust our exposure, and I'm gonna, again, just use my waveform monitor here. I'm gonna drop in the white block there to be just over 75. And again, that gives us a perfect exposure using Cine EI with the actually recorded image being 1.7 stops increased exposure. And again, we can see that by turning the LUT off, our, you know, our exposure on the S-Log is increased over where it would normally be. And again, with the LUT on, we're seeing a good image, which is great for being able to eyeball the exposure. I mean, to me, being able to just look at the monitor and expose the image to look correct is a much nicer way of working than having to always try and overexpose a certain amount. So hopefully that gives you a good understanding of the benefits of using Cine EI. It really just gives you a powerful tool for monitoring your images at the same time as allowing the camera to adjust the exposure levels of the recorded image. So one of the things you need to have a good understanding of when using Cine EI is how to monitor blown out white. When parts of your image become so overexposed that there's no more data and it just turns to pure white, you need to be able to keep an eye on that. Now, when you're using a waveform like I've got on my monitor here, that's very easy because you can see once the data starts to stack up at the top, and I can show you that now, if I start to increase exposure, then you'll see that that's stacking at the top there. Now, in order to show you this, I'm going to switch my exposure index back to the native 12,800 uh, base high level. And that gives me a bit more exposure to play with. Now, if I increase my exposure now, so that it's really blown, you know, the image is really, really overexposed. We're seeing all of the data stacking at the top on the waveform. It looks to be around 100 IRE there. So if I then go ahead and change my uh, zebras on the FX3, and we're gonna set the lower limit up until we're seeing the point at which they blow out. So at 100, we're not seeing any zebras at all. So I'm going to come down one to 99. And now that's showing us the brightest areas of the scene. And at the moment, you can see the camera is showing us that's just this, these areas here. So if I increase exposure even more, then you can really see the blown out areas of the image. Now this is showing the most blown out areas on the screen. And we can confirm this by using the histogram. Uh, you're probably going to struggle to see it here. And I'll see if I can do a close up. But uh, on the histogram here, once the last line on the right is no longer being populated and the histogram starts to move to the left, then in theory, there is no more data being lost. And that's confirmed by what I'm seeing both on the zebras on the screen and by the histogram here. And you can see that you know, that information is, is no longer being lost. If we switch to the low base, then overexpose, 
Now I'm not going to be able to overexpose at the low base, although I can increase my base level back to 800 EI and we're still not really seeing anything blowing out on there. So what I'm going to do to make up for this is I'm just going to uh, reduce my shutter speed and then we will start to see areas blowing. And again, this appears to be at 99. And if I go and confirm that, so I'm going to go across to my lower limit again, once it's up to 100, we're no longer seeing any zebras. So 99 is the point at, at which we're seeing the highest values we can. Now that's all good and that's great. And it'd be nice to be able to just say, well, okay, so you just set your high limit to 99 and then that will allow you to monitor it on the camera. But it doesn't work like that because what happens is if we then go in and do what we did earlier, and I'm gonna change my, we're, again, we're on our low base here. So I'm gonna change this down to 250 EI, which is 1.7 stops lower, and then I raise my exposure. Now I can get really bright here, but again, we're not seeing any zebras at all. Now, why is that? Well, you can kind of see that on the waveform here, that the point at which the image becomes overexposed has dropped. And I can show that by going into the zebras and let's start coming down and see where they appear. So the zebras are now appearing at 95 or the, or the maximum recorded brightness is 95. Anything higher than that, if you go higher, you won't see any zebras. So that's something to bear in mind because if you're gonna start changing your exposure index, you have to remember that the point at which the whites are blowing out is going to change. Okay, so now that you've got a better understanding of how Cine EI works and how to control it, Let's go back and look at the other options we had for the way it's controlled. So I'm going to go back into menu and you'll see here we're in main two and then at the top left here we've got the Cine EI option. So I'm going to go into that and then we see our log shooting option and this, this is where we have these menu items here. So first of all let's look at the top one, flexible ISO. Well if we choose that, so the only difference really now over the way we used to work is that you can still turn on and off uh, preview LUTs. So you can turn on alert and that will be applied to both the screen and the external monitor and then obviously any ISO changes you make will uh, be reflected upon both. If you prefer to control ISO rather than exposure index then you can use this method instead. Now if we go back and choose uh, Cine EI Quick this is using the Cine EI system. Uh, the only difference here is that rather than using the button on top to swap between high and low base and then making adjustments from there, uh, you can now just scroll through all of those options using the dial. So you'll see if we start from the minimum, which is a 200 exposure index, that's automatically on low. So it's on the low base. I can scroll up and then go through to 800, which is the actual low base setting. And then we can go up if you wanted to uh, have a lower exposure then you can go all the way up to 2500 and then on the next step it goes to 3200 but that automatically jumps up to the high base so we've gone up to 12800 in the background and then you can continue scrolling through uh, which would result in obviously less exposure or a brighter screen now personally i find this to be a little bit more confusing it's much nicer to be able to jump between the low and the high base. So I'm going to go back in and change this to Cine EI because I find this to be uh, the best option. And again, now, so we've got the ability to, you know, set our exposure index for each base level accordingly, and then press the button on top to jump to the high base. So, you know, I just find that to be uh, a nicer way to work. So let's talk a little bit about the limitations when using Cine EI. So the first one, as we've already discussed, is if you want to use an external recorder, say a Ninja 5, then you're not going to be able to do that when using Cine EI because it can't output the clean 4K signal. You're only going to get 1080p and it's going to include the LUT. Now one way around that is to record in ProRes RAW if you're using the Ninja 5. So I'm going to go ahead and fit my Ninja 5 now and I'll show you that that works.
Okay, so now with the uh, Ninja 5 attached, uh, you can see it works the same way. So we're currently at our load base with the 800 exposure index set. And if I turn the LUT on and off, uh, you'll see it works in the same way. So this is with the LUT on, and you can see it's applying to both the camera and to the Ninja. Anyway, you can see that uh, with, the, with the LUT off, so the LUT's off on the camera and it's off on the Ninja, and with the LUT on, it applies to both. If I go into the menu and go for the HDMI output settings, and we'll just turn on a raw output. Just wait for that to catch up, which it did. And then we'll come out of the menu. So now you'll see that the actual Ninja is receiving the log file, as whereas the as display on the camera is showing the LUT. And I can show you that if I turn the LUT on and off on the camera, you can see that's no longer affecting the Ninja. The Ninja is just showing the S-Log3 file. And I can confirm that by looking at uh, what it's receiving at the top there. And it shows it's getting 4.2K S-Log3. Okay, a couple more things that I've noticed since playing with Cine EI is that you can no longer use automatic white balance for some reason. If you go into your white balance settings, you'll notice that AWB is greyed out. And the same for uh, underwater auto balance. If, if you've planned on using Cine EI underwater, then uh, you're out of luck, I'm afraid, if you want to use auto white balance. I'm not sure why that would be the case. You can still use all of the presets and the custom settings and uh, you can dial in the Kelvin manually. You just can't use auto white balance for some reason. And finally, one other thing I've noticed, and I'm not sure how much of a problem this is, but when we had the ability to use uh, picture profiles, of course, we could go in and change lots of settings like the detail, saturation, stuff like that. Now, with the inability to use a picture profile, uh, when we're using Cine EI, it doesn't seem like you can actually customize the look of S-Log3 at all. So that is one other thing which I'm not sure if it's a problem, but one thing to bear in mind. Okay, so I think that really covers Cine EI for now. If you have any uh, questions or you've discovered something that I haven't, then please let me know. Uh, like most of you, I've only been using this for a couple of days now. So uh, I think I've got my head around it and hopefully that helps you to have a bit of a better understanding. But this is still a discovery stage. So if there's anything that I've missed or anything that I've got totally wrong, then please feel free to uh, let me know in the comments and it will be good to hear your thoughts. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.